Hello, this is the Trudy Haynes Show, but a very special one as we end the summer. It's been a kind of a mixed up summer, but we're going into fall with some very important issues facing us. The instance, the November election. And I have some people gathered around me, some friends on Mr. Dr. Robinson's yacht who have been talking about all of these issues like immigration, the Affordable Care Act, Health Care Act, uh, education, the, ta the taxes, the everything just about, and immigration. So we're going to find out what they're thinking about and we hope to find out what you're thinking about. But the important thing to remember is that you must vote. Now we're on the yacht so you might say this is unusual. Well it is for us too. So if you see a little rocking and you see a little scanning, pay it no mind. This is As It Is with Trudy Haynes and I'd like to introduce them. Phyllis, you first. I am Phyllis and I'm an educator. Uh -huh. um, and you, Emma. Emerson Ruffin, graphic designer. Giuseppe Cage, entrepreneur. Uh, Ralph Easley, tech startup entrepreneur. One of the things that I would like to start off with, and I know all of you have some thoughts about it, and that is the immigration law, but one of the things that's most important to me about this uh, vote is to improve our education. And Phyllis, I know you've been a great uh, value for that. I would like to see uh, reduced tuition for college students, especially in Pennsylvania. We can't uh, receive free tuition, such as mm -hmm. it is in Canada, However, I think the reduced tuition is primary. Mm -hmm. uh, student loans are available. However, it takes a student usually 25 years to pay it back. I also like the programs in which if your tuition is reduced, you work within the state for 10 years or 15 years. That also works for me. Do you think this can happen in this election because some people are not for uh, paying any attention to education? I think it's up what to the it? candidates and yeah. their viewpoints so how and how they do feel. That, Emerson? Um, well, I, I really don't have an answer for that. I, I don't know how, but don't, the only thing I could think of, I'm thinking in, in, in my, my perspective is more geared towards like, uh, like high school students uh -huh. before they go to college. And I think that... Uh, we should do more for the public school system. Mm -hmm. um, especially me being a Philadelphian and going to school and seeing like the disadvantages that we had, the outdated books to, you know, even programs being pulled from out of schools. You know, they're, they're closing more schools and they're opening more prisons. So what I'd like to see um, manifest ultimately is um, them making, I guess for high school students, um, and making, making that transition period like to college like make them more equipped that way we could see those numbers you know raise higher especially people of color personally for me yeah you know what one of the things that will make some of these things happen even in education would be if you get out and vote and that's why it's so important for you to get out and vote in November I know you agree with me I couldn't agree more I've always felt that education was the concrete and the tar to pave the road to equality. And I think that we're kind of lacking. I'm not from Pennsylvania or Philadelphia. I'm from New Jersey. But the disparity in what urban communities get in education vice what we see out in New Jersey suburbs, I think it's almost sickening and disgusting. I see this gentleman next to you is sort of uh, from the old school like me. Oh, absolutely. And I know you have some thoughts about education. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think you have it exactly right. I'm old school like you. And I think that they should have the kind of quality now that they had in the old days like you and I had. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was more focused on parents being uh, part of the whole process and everything not being left on the so-called school administrators and school teachers to maintain uh, classroom control. I was never worried about what the teacher said. I was worried about what my dad was going to say if he found out I acted up. <laughs> I know, that's right. Absolutely. I remember yeah. that. But how are we going to improve the school situation if we don't vote? Because this is an important vote where you pick the people who are going to run your life. In Congress, in government, as a governorship, uh, congressman, and so forth. Phyllis, you are a, a, a Delta, like the AKA member, and I know that you talk about these things 
regularly, we also have the Meet the Candidates, which is important because when you go out to meet the candidates, um, Greek letter organizations have a an evening or a day where you meet the candidates running in Philadelphia and suburban Philadelphia. Also the NAACP. I know Montgomery County, Elkins Park, also has Meet the Candidates. You attend and you ask questions. And you ask pointed questions. And if it's the candidate is evasive, you redirect the question. You have to be involved in order to understand their perspective mm -hmm. and know whether or not they will vote the way you want them to vote. I want to see what these young, these men think well, about. Well, well, okay, go ahead. Well, I, I, want, I wanted to uh, say more about the importance of voting, though. Because, you know, a lot of people have critiques and, you know, complaints and different things that they have to say. But we can't afford the, the luxury of complaining and not do anything about it. So the best uh, foot forward is voting. You know, what, what better way to have your voice heard by taking action? Sorry. Well, taking action, does that mean having uh, guns in schools? How do you f men feel about that? Well, me personally, as far as having guns in school, I'm not particularly for that. Uh, what I'm for is more books, and I think if you have a more educated mind, you're so much less likely to be violent. If you look at those that are violent, one thing that's always common with that is the fact of lack of education. And we take that back into slavery times. And this was times when we're not going to let you read, we're going to keep you uneducated, and an uneducated mind is a violent one. Well, you know, we have more to talk about, much more with the people that are visiting us to, on this yacht. But right now, we're going to go to our Don Watts, who has some other thoughts from other people. Take it away, Don. Thanks, Trudy. I'm here with Tanya, and she's going to tell us what she feels is important about this upcoming election. I think there's a lot at stake this time around, but I think what stands out to me the most is the current state of health care in the U.S., uh, namely mental health. Um, we don't want to talk about gun control. We don't want to talk about the education, but let's talk about the importance of mental health in all aspects as far as that, as far as preventing school shootings, as, as far as, uh, you know, our homeless on the street, a good a good majority of them uh, have mental health concerns and I think once we address that maybe we can uh, have a more sound population and uh, yeah I think that's that's the main part for me thank you for your input back to you Trudy well we've heard from Dawn and that was fabulous this is really moving hot because we want to make sure that you understand why it is important for your vote the one vote. The one vote is yours. And that's the time when you can say what you feel and point to the people that you want to be in office. And I know, sir, that you have something to say about that voting. Oh, absolutely. And you know what, Trudy? It goes back to like what you said earlier about education, old school. Old school voting for me, I'm from Alabama. As a matter of fact, Talladega, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm of the age when Dr. King started in Montgomery. I was seven years old. He used to travel all around. This is before he was real big and famous. He came to our church uh, and I used to go to the chapel over at Talladega College. I live right down the road from the chapel. Okay. I say this and I'm sure that I'm right because I was there. One of the m major issues Dr. King was fighting about was the right to vote. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, in my mind's eye, just like Jesus Christ died for our sins, Dr. King died for our right to vote. vote. Is that and, important? And it is a right. It's not a privilege. It's a right. It's a right. We should do that. And one of the important things about voting is, well, the education is important because if you can't read the, the small print on anything, you get sucked in. That's exactly what happens to you. Right. So we have to educate and we, but we have to vote in order to prove our education. So it all goes hand in hand. I think that one of the other things, well, let me ask you this. We had a sad ending to, to our summer uh, vacations or work period or the summer in the death of two icons, Governor McCain, uh, Senator McCain, and of course the Queen, uh, um, Aretha Franklin. And, but they set the tune for what's going to be coming or what should be coming when we all get together for this election and for the coming fall. Have you thoughts of that? Do you think it was meaningful? 
I think it was very meaningful and it's important that the millennials get out to vote. Well, we have there are more of them right than there are <laughs> of senior citizens. How are you going to do that, Emerson? Get the people to vote. How are you doing that? Um, <laughs> I guess I guess one, one one better one best way to uh, to reach people is not just uh, limiting your reach on social media platforms. You know, going out into your neighborhood. You know, actually starting a conversation because most best ideas that's that's where they originate. That's the origins of everything that brings forth change. And it's not just up to you younger people, but it's up to us older people mm -hmm. to make sure that we pick up people, get them to the voting places, encourage them, and tell them why this is such an important election. Because if we miss this one, we're going to miss it for another eight or more years. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful and we have to be very, very strict about voting. Uh, don't you think so, Okay, sir? I tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak real quick because uh, I love what you said about the significance of McCain and Aretha Franklin. Seemingly, you can't see where McCain would fit in. Uh, but actually, everybody knows Aretha was very active. Her and Mahalia Jackson sang at all the civil rights rallies, all the things uh, involved with getting blacks the right to vote. However, McCain is a very significant person in a positive way because even though he was a Republican, he was a one of those across the aisle Republicans. If you notice, uh, Senator Joe Biden and Obama spoke at his yes, funeral. Exactly. Additionally, he proved in the end, all the way up to his last votes, that he was more interested in what was right and wrong than what was the current topic of the day for the Republican Party. McCain is the one who cast a vote That's that kept right. Obamacare available for the rest of the United States. And he felt like that was more important for his country than following the, the Republican uh, talking line. Now, you know, we're talking about country. This is our country. This is where we live. This is where we work. So why not do the best that we can to make this a living country, a living country for everyone. We all need to pull together. I do a lot of mentoring with young youth and the one thing I always express to them because they feel that slavery can never happen again. And I say that's not true. That's the right. two dynamic components of slavery is not allowing blacks to read and not allowing them to vote. Taxation without representation. Mm -hmm. Those are the two main components of the, the dynamic components of slavery. So if that happens again, closing uh, voter booths and uh, segregating where people can actually vote, they're trying to make that happen again. Please get out to vote, rain or shine, young and old, male and female, white and black. Do what is yours to do. Vote in November. Right now, I'm voting for Dawn because she's got some other people with her and she's going to be furthering our discussion. Stay with us. Well, given what you said in regards to gun control and the homeless, how do you think that the Supreme Court election is going to file into that? I think that people have more of an ear to the issues this time around, or at least that's what I'm hoping. Um, but I think uh, people are taking notice. Either they're resistant to gun control, therefore they're going to vote against anything that, you know, would help us in that aspect, or they're going to be so passionate about it that they'll vote for anyone who is, you know, backed by the NRA or... Oh, I don't know. This is, that was a tough question. It's a difficult subject, and I understand you're not being sure. Um, just one more thing. So you're going to go out and rock the vote, right? Of course. All right. Of course. Awesome. I'm driving the minivan. Okay. Awesome. Back to you, Trudy. And again, you're back with me, but one of our uh, people, one of our guests had to leave, Emerson, but he apologizes, but I still have Phyllis and Giuseppe and Ralph. So we're going to find out what there, what's on your mind. What are you beefing about? I'm beefing about the uh, current administration perpetuating racism and bigotry. He's making it seem okay 
to make inappropriate comments and lewd comments for the public. There's a segment of our nation that chooses to use that terminology, etc., and he's making it okay. So he's setting a poor example for everyone. That's my beef. And I say that mine kind of parallels that as well as too. It's become commonplace to use these dog whistles and use terminology that we know as African Americans in the community, which has never been acceptable. It's never been acceptable to refer to us as monkeys. It's never been acceptable to us to use s whole countries when you're referring to countries uh, that are in Africa. We know exactly what that message is and what it's going out to the masses and what it's saying. They've just traded the N-word for something that's a little bit more passive and a little bit more acceptable for them to be able to use in the mainstream. We'll be gorillas next, or we'll be thugs. They'll go back to thugs. And it's also a form of bullying. He's Absolutely. the biggest bull bully walking the face of the earth today. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, and one of the things that confuses me, and because I agree with everything that everybody is saying, it confuses me how there are so many white people in America that do not realize that this man is making America hate again, not great again. Absolutely. The rest of the world is not buying into it. And these folks are so silly to the point of being stupid that they think racism is going to make them great. Now, I'll go back to the civil rights days. Now, I was like I told you earlier, I was in Alabama. I remember when uh, black people couldn't go into what I call now wool worthless and have a cup of coffee. This is in Alabama. I remember when you couldn't say nothing uh, different than what a white person said because that was sputing his word. I remember when they had the first safe space version. Okay, now let's look at what happened. During that time, that's when America was so busy trying to keep black people from their constitutional right to vote that they missed the ball. And that's during the time period when Japan first started to market cars over here. Let's fast forward to where we are now. We lost. General Motors, now it's Government Motors. Mm -hmm. Chrysler is owned by an outside uh, company, outside of the U.S. government. American Motors is gone. And we can go on. Okay. In Talladega County, Alabama, now they have the Honda manufacturing plant uh, for trucks in America. From when I was a kid till now, what did it gain them? <laughs> I think one of the other things that people don't realize about racism is is that it's not a majority issue. It's a minority. We need to get to the majority because white people put Obama in office. It wasn't blacks. If we're 13% of the U.S. population, the percentage of us that actually vote is even probably half of that. So, and I'm the product of an all-white community. And I'll tell you this, for every instance of racism that I've ever seen, there are probably 50 to 100 white folks touting that, yo, that's not all right. Hey, Giuseppe, things are going to be better, and, uh, you know, we're with you. So I've seen that point. This is an ugly, ugly minority of white people that we're seeing right now, and the ones that are touting and that believe in equality and have no bigotry toward them, we got to make sure that we get them supported and that we align with them and uh, start getting that word out again so we can crush what we're seeing now. So let's What's your closing remarks? My closing remarks are to go out and meet the candidates and question them and hold them accountable for their viewpoints and their positions. Just happening. Yeah, I think I'd like to see a lot of organizations begin to get more focused and more intense on getting more African Americans to go out there and vote again. Uh, don't vote for the candidate. Vote for their policies. Don't vote for the party. Vote for what they stand for and what's important in our community. Okay, sir. Ralph? And I'd like to endorse everything that everybody previous to me said. And I would just like to add, it is very important that we vote. That is one of the major uh, points that was we were fighting for in the civil rights era. And if now black lives matter, so do black votes. That takes it a full circle. We won't get it done, of course, unless you do vote. So remember that. And take someone along with you when you go. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk with you and to hear your opinions, everyone that's on the panel, Phyllis and Ralph and Giuseppe. 
And even though we had to lose Emerson in the beginning, he had something to say also. So we're very happy to make this a very special Trudy Haynes show, and we hope it's meaningful for you. We want to thank our reporter, Dawn Watts. Thank you for being with us on this very special Trudy Haynes show. What exactly does the 70 do, Committee of 70 do? Well, the Committee of 70 is a, is a nonpartisan uh, civic leadership organization that uh, helps voters uh, understand the choices they make at elections, encourages people to get involved in the political process, because we think that's the, the best way to make our local democracy work. And we've been doing that for a long time. Yes, you have. <laughs> so now, coming in to November, we have a very selective and a very special election. Would you say it's unusual? Well, you know, around here, every election is a special one. We, we figure it's like Christmas and New Year's, uh, you know, every time an election comes up. This election is particularly consequential, I think, because people are looking at the, the midterm of the president, mm -hmm. And you know, we've got congressional races coming up, and people are very interested and passionate about uh, how those elections will reflect on people's opinion of the president. So the so-called midterm congressional elections are really significant. There's a lot of energy around those. There's a lot of money being raised and spent, a lot of doors being knocked on. So those are probably the most significant uh, races uh, from one standpoint, but you know we're also electing uh, a governor in Pennsylvania, and we're electing uh, one of our two U.S. senators, and then there's all of the state house, the state legislative mm -hmm. seats. Whether well, in Pennsylvania there are 203 uh, house seats, and all, and all of them are up because mm -hmm. those are every two years. Uh, and then the Pennsylvania State Senate, there are 50 of those, and half of those uh, are up for uh, uh, standing for election mm -hmm. this time around. So it's a, it's a pretty big and consequential, and as you said, uh, special uh, ballot. And uh, we hope people take every uh, opportunity to get informed and get engaged. And if they need help, can they call you? They can always call us. Uh, although most folks these days go to our website, mm -hmm. which is 70, the word, 70 spelled out, dot org. And we put a lot of time and effort into our voter guide to help people understand the candidates and the issues. Totally nonpartisan. We're not picking sides here. We just want people to know uh, what's going on. In fact, last spring when we had a primary election, we had uh, over 85,000 people go to our website uh, to learn about candidates. So we, we you sure you're expecting more? well, I think we'll expect at least that number number in November because, as I said, there's there's a lot of really important races going on. Okay, so the most thing we have to make sure that everyone gets out to vote. That's the story, and you know, when it comes down to it. Um, uh, people say, well, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on or who's running or what the issues are. Even We encourage you to go to our website, but even failing that, you know, my basic advice is always to people, just talk to someone, ask someone. Ask someone in your church or on your block or uh, a friend or a co-worker who seems they know what they're, they're, they're going on. People usually are uh, happy to share their opinions with you. The other thing I encourage is, is um, it's a funny little thing, but for, for your viewers that have children, take them to the polls with you. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it will make a big difference to those young folks to see what this whole democracy thing is about. And it probably will help remind them to vote you know, once they turn 18. So a couple of little tricks for, uh, for people to remember. In other words, don't leave home without the Committee of 70 <laughs> and vote. And that date is November? Uh, it's November 6th is the election, yep. So a big, important Tuesday in November. Thank you. Thank you very much. Remember, family, it's your right to vote, so do it on November the 6th. But stand by because we're ending this show on a high note with the fabulous Dixie Hummingbirds.
We arrived here with the Dixie Hummingbird, at least the ones that are alive now, and we're so proud of them, and we're so glad that they were able to follow in some great footsteps. So just quickly, I'm going to have them tell you who they are. What's your name? What's your name? Lyndon Jones. Tori Nettles. Carlton Lewis. Troy Smith. Roy Smith. Uh, well, they were great. They put on a great show here at the World's Cafe. I don't know where they're going next, but they're in our hearts to keep forever. And I want to let them know that we appreciate their music. I mean, I got up and started dancing. A lot, of the, a lot of these folks don't know how to do that, you know. But that's all right. We remember. I'm 90 years old, and I remember well. So, fellas, thank you for carrying on a great tradition. Okay, come on over here, baby. Come on over here. Here comes the band. Make it happen. That's right. So, all right. This is indeed a treat. And the person who made this event possible. Come on in here, Lediva. Right now, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is my show. I can do what I want. Stand up. Stand up. All right. Lediva Davis, who's been a friend of mine for years, and she put this all together. Hello! Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Talk to him. What, what, what did you want me? Uh, my name is Ladiva Davis. I teach at the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts. I co-manage the Dixie Hummingbirds. And uh, it, what a wonderful, wonderful experience. It was a, uh, we're going to Oak Grove Church on September the 16th. Okay, we may be there, who knows? But in the meantime, fellas, Congratulations Thanks to all of so you. It was a wonderful you. show, and I'm very proud of you to Thank carry you. on a great tradition God bless and a legacy. You. Thank, you so Thank you so much. The Dixie Hummingbird. Yay! Yay. Yay.